If you're thinking about becoming a full-time RVer, you do not want to buy the wrong camper. Stay tuned for tips on buying a travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome for full-time RV living. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz, and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you can live amazing in full-time RV life. I've been doing it for three and a half years, and so has Paul. And if you're a regular viewer, you're probably wondering, where is Paul? <laughs> well, you can hear him if you listen carefully, and I will show you in a little bit. He is actually busy working on the camper. Well, I started full-time RV life in a camper van and we're currently in a fifth wheel. This is the eighth camper for me. And Paul and I have been on the road all this time and we meet people who have bought the wrong camper. So grab a notebook. I'm gonna give you some tips because there's a big difference between buying a camper for weekend use and full-time use. And if you don't even have a camper at all, there are certain things that you wanna look for that are very important for full-time RV living. So we started a fun game where you get to guess the mystery clip at the end of the video. I have a big library of travel clips from where we've been all over the nation and there's always a little clue. So even if you haven't done much traveling yourself, watch and you'll see some clues. And if you guess, if you're the first one to get it right, you will get a sticker. We'll send you a sticker. The number one thing to look for is cargo carrying capacity. You're gonna be carrying a lot more stuff if you're doing full-time RV living. You're gonna have your full array of tools. You're gonna to have four seasons of clothing. There's just a lot more things that you'll be carrying. So here are some important things to know about the CCC rating, the cargo carrying capacity. Every camper has a CCC rating and it's usually printed outside on the official tag. Know that the CCC is calculated with the camper fully loaded. So that means that that number includes a full fresh water tank, full hot water tank, full propane. And if it's a class A motorhome or other drivable, it also includes a full gas tank. Now you can take more stuff with you by traveling with an empty fresh water tank. In our case, that gives us an extra 771 pounds. The next thing to look at is for season. Even if you think you're always going to be following 70 degree weather, since Paul and I have been on the road, we have been down to 17 at night. We have been up over 95. You will want to have a rig that's called four season and that means it's better insulated. Keeping in line with the four season theme, you'll also want... <laughs> That's Paul now. <laughs> so continuing with the four season theme, you'll also wanna look for something with a heated underbelly and also heated tanks. So heated fresh water, black and gray tanks. Because if you get below freezing, you could freeze your pipes and you don't want that. The next thing is you wanna save on propane. Propane can be kind of a pain to keep replenishing. It's amazing how fast some of these campers will just go through propane. One of the top things I look for in shopping for a camper is dual hot water. Your hot water will use a lot of propane, but if you have dual hot water, when you're in a campground, you switch it over to electric and then you're not using any propane. I also look for different heat sources. So in addition to a propane furnace, which I think is very important, we also have a heat pump and a fireplace. Both of those are running on electric. Now the limitation on a heat pump is it really does not work very well or at all under 40 degrees. But in those chilly mornings, it helps us save on propane. I wanna remind you to subscribe and ring the bell. It really helps us grow. It helps you to put our content out there to recommend it to other people. So thank you for doing that. Plus, our videos typically come out every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, but we are throwing some extra ones in. So if you ring the bell, you'll get a notification. So when Paul moved in, I had a fifth wheel and the first thing we realized is there just was not enough storage for all his tools. So you'll really wanna take a close look at your exterior storage, make sure you have room for tools and you'll also probably be carrying a ladder. So kind of think about all those things and make sure that there's space for them. Inside, we only had a two and a half foot wide closet that was just not enough for hanging clothes. Think about your coats, they need to go somewhere. We ended up putting them on hooks. So definitely look for you know, enough space for your clothes. 
Now I could do a whole video on finding the right kitchen for a full-time RV life, but just on the high points, you wanna have a large enough fridge. When I was in the camper van, I had a large fridge for a van and it was just large enough. I mean, I had to sort of do this roulette every time I went to the grocery store. I was doing a lot of shuffling to get everything to fit. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about is just having a place for the trash can. You don't have a lot of floor space in an RV, so you really don't wanna have a trash can sitting out. We're really lucky here in that our garbage is in a pull-out drawer. In the fifth wheel we had prior, there was a place under the countertop for it. So just kind of keep an eye out when you're shopping for smart storage solutions for that and also for shoes. Now, 99% of the people who do full-time RV living take their shoes off when they walk in the door. Paul does not, he's the 1% who does not. So you want to have a place right by the door that will take care of the shoes, whether it's built in with the RV or there be enough space so you can have a place for them. Because these are the little things that can actually become a problem if day after day after day you're tripping over shoes. Now the next thing to think about is washer and dryer. Do you want one or not? If you're not sure, you might wanna at least get a camper with washer dryer hookups. Now, Paul and I full-timed for two and a half years, going to the laundromat that entire time, and then the last year, we have had a washer and dryer. Let me tell you, we love having it. It saves us so much time. It saves our clothes. The clothes get cleaner. We can tell you nightmare stories about going to the laundromat and finding the machines broken or full or how expensive the machines are, how kind of a pain in the butt it is to do laundry, but it's doable. And honestly, if you're looking at it just from a financial standpoint, the washer and dryer will never pay for itself, but definitely something to think about. Also think about other things that you may wanna take with you like bikes or kayaks. Is there a place to store that on the outside of the rig or, how, or is there a reinforced hitch? One of the campers I looked at didn't have a rear hitch, so I wasn't able to take a bike rack and I thought, well, I'm not gonna buy that. If you know that you're gonna do a lot of boondocking, you're gonna be camping out in the woods or in the desert, solar will be a priority for you. If you're shopping for campers and it doesn't come with solar, you at least want it to have it solar ready. My next tip is don't be afraid to make the floor plan your own. It's not a big deal to take out a couch. And in fact, Paul and I took out a couch and we put in a home office. So when you're looking at floor plans, kind of have an eye if you're handy, you know, to doing a little bit of renovation. Well, let's go see what Paul's doing. We can't have a video without Paul, so. <laughs> what are you doing? Picks. Pex plumbing, or just plumbing. I'm adding an accumulator. It's an excellent way to get a more consistent flow of water out of your faucet. Let us know any shopping tips that you have in the comments, and we will see you in the next video.